Okay. So for those of you who don't know, our next speaker's name is Benga Ayodada. Right? Like I said, I'm going to introduce him properly because I mean that's the proper thing to do. Okay. Okay, so Benga is a multi a multi multiple award winning lead designer at Benga at Smith. If you know Benga at Smith, I mean you know that they make fabulous jewelry, like fabulous. Okay. Now Benga at Smith is a jewelry brand that creates exclusive handcrafted and elegant works of art. He started Benga at Smith 12 years ago at the veranda of his father's house, you know, like humble beginnings, before opening his flagship store at Okwebi, Lagos State. His quest for excellence and inimitable innovation, innovative skills as a jewelry artist is undeniable and has earned him innovations to prestigious events such as the London Fashion Week Paris Fashion Week and the Commonwealth Summit. Besides being a jewelry designer, he's also a social entrepreneur. And that explains why Benga Art Smith Jewelry is a socially conscious brand. In March 2018, he championed a continent wide campaign in commemoration of Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month, which was widely syndicated across various TV stations, blogs, and social media platforms. Then in October 2019, he commanded global recognition when he was spotlighted as one of Africa's chain makers on CNN's African Voices for his breast cancer awareness campaign, which was also featured on the cover of This Day Style. Okay, so his vision is to make Benga Art Smith synonymous with handcrafted jewelry worldwide, and he's inching closer to the actualization of that vision one disco piece at a time. He's also a musician, content creator, a stylist, and a creative writer. He will be speaking on the topic, expressing creativity from an early age. So please, let's welcome Benga. Good morning, everyone. It's good to be here. It's good to have you. It's good to have, I mean, it's a pleasure to be here <laughs> with you. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, can you see me better? Let me adjust my screen. Is this better? Yeah, I think it is. So I'm going to be speaking uh, with you on expressing um, creativity from an early age for just a couple of minutes. I was told that and the participants are parents, so I had to tweak my, um, I had to tweak what I had planned to say, you know, to address parents uh, particularly. I will start with the fact that uh, parents need to understand their children more. They need to understand what is a universal fact about children. Children tend not to know what they want. Like we Nigerians say, they tend not to know their left from their right from an early age. So they tend to do all sorts of things. They tend to want to do their own things their own way, you know, live on their own terms. That could be a good thing and that might be a bad thing too. But uh, overall, I, uh, I I would just say, as a parent, uh, you need to channel your children's energies right. Do you understand? You need to direct their zeal properly. So if their zeal, because it's just, I mean, it's very typical for children to be uh, zealous, sometimes over zealous. But rather than complain about it, try to beat it out of them, try to talk them down and see how you can channel it properly, otherwise they will grow wild. You know, children are hyperactive, they want to, they're always uh, busy with different things. They're always active in one thing or the other. Now, this could also be a bad thing if that energy is not channeled properly. So rather than discourage those things, find a way to help them to express themselves as energetic beings in, in, in more productive ways. So that's one common mistake I find with children. It is normal for a child to want to do many different things or to want to be so many things at a time as a child because they don't know what they want yet. They don't, they've not found their foot uh, and they, they have not discovered their purpose. So it's very okay. So rather than mock them or try to... Uh, Try to project your own expectations on them. Understand them, study the child, and then help the child to discover its purpose. Find what the, the child does the most. And then there's this thing, many parents 
uh, mock the, uh, I will use the word mock, mock their children who are, uh, who want to do many different things. So I will give an example in church, you know, it, um, they, there's usually, I think uh, it's called the uh, Children's Sunday or something like that, or Children's Week in every church, they have something like that. So it's normal for a child, not every uh, child now, especially creative children, they want to be in so many uh, groups. They want to do drama, they want to sing, they want to do everything at, at a time. It's very okay. So rather than uh, try to talk down on, on the child and say, oh, do you want to be everything? We say jack of all trades, master of none. But I discovered recently that many people don't know that that is just part A of the quote. That quote, jack of all trades, master of none, is usually not quoted in full. And it is wrong. This is what it says. Jack of all trades, master, the master of none, oftentimes better than a master of one. I'll take that again. Jack of all trades, master of none but oftentimes better than being a master of one. Now, it, it's very okay for a child to be multi-talented, to want to do so many different things. I mean, look at me, I do so many different things at a time. It's okay. Do you understand? Uh, because right now we live in a world whereby it's very critical to have multiple streams of income because you cannot survive on just one stream of income. So we have even people with a nine to five having side hustles. You have uh, somebody working in a bank selling uh, stuff uh, on the side or being uh, doing personal shopping for people on the side or digital marketing or something. It's very okay. So from an early age, you know, there are so many stereotypes that we need to correct in Nigeria or a child being left-handed with so um I think you about call it akpausi or something or wosi that it is wrong to use the the left hand and everything and then you render the child redundant by forcing the child to use the right hand you need to understand your child you need to understand the peculiarities of your child if your child is the type that it's not really into so many activities. Don't force the child to be a singer, an actor, a this, a that. It is okay. If you have a child who wants to express themselves in very different ways, let them try it out. But it is not your duty as a parent to help the child identify the one he excels, excels at the most. So the child is in the choir, in the drama department, in the ushering department. It is your duty to study the child or make the child understand that you see, you do all these things very well, but you do this the best. You, 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 you do singing the best. Do you understand? So that child will end up uh, mastering singing, mastering music and use, majoring in that uh, field. If you get my point, you know, in schools we say, oh, uh, is an art major, is a this major. Even at, uh, if you study medicine, for example, you you study general medicine, uh, I think up to your 300 level, then you pick an area of specialization, maybe dentistry, maybe this, maybe that. So that is how we actually also be, let the child express themselves in different ways. Then later on, when the child uh, has gotten established, to an extent is for you to now say, oh, you know what? I think you'll make a good singer. Are you getting it? I think you'll make a good drummer, a good instrumentalist. So I think you should master playing the drums, master using your voice to sing well. And then acting can now be a side also, something that you do in your spare time, something that you do, um, something that, that you, you can also do. So this is the best way, um, you can uh, teach a child, okay. So as a singer, you are not, you're not always going to be singing, of course. You're not always going to be on the stage. You're not always going to be in the studio recording or something. So what do you do with your spare time? In your spare time, you can be an actor. You can have a schedule. Oh, this is uh, if it's even established artists. They have a tour schedule. Even even when they say an artist is fully booked for the year, doesn't mean that the, the artist is busy twenty four days in the three hundred and sixty five days that we have in, in the year. They have their spare time. So acting is something the child can do in 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 his or own spare time. Am I am I communicating? So uh, when you discover the child is creative. Your duty as a parent is to help them nurture it. Not that the child will nurture the talents on their own or uh, somebody else will believe in the child, groom the child, and then uh, tomorrow you start claiming, oh, it's my child, it's my child, I'm proud of the child. No. See, the um, 
example of this young uh, comedian, uh, Emanuela, I, I can tell that the uh, influence of the parents in the child's life is very strong. The girl is not even a teenager. She's a multimillionaire. She's, she, she's recently been, uh, she was recently featured, I don't know if the movie is out yet, in a Hollywood uh, movie. For, and she recently won uh, a global award, Nickelodeon uh, award. From just doing comedy skits now, imagine if the child didn't support her, they didn't encourage her, they, they discourage that data. Is that what your mates uh, are doing? You, when your mates are striving to be doctors, you want to be doing comedy. But look at her today. And that's why till date she honors her parents. You would expect that, oh, with the fame, with the fortune, fortune this girl would, would, would have, uh, let me use the right word, would have grown wings. Do you understand? Grown wings to the point that you know she's now wearing wig, she's now wearing makeup. For a child that age in this uh, time that we're in, it's not strange to see a child. She's after all, I'm a star. But the girl still fears, fears her parents because she knows that her success started with her parents. So she still reverences her parents. I, she said something recently, um, I think when she bought, uh, bought a house for her parents, she was saying something that uh, she didn't do because she knows her mom will not approve of it. That is it. That is a child that is actively involved in the child's life, participating in the child's uh, growth and success. But you can imagine if the parents were not there, she, if this is, she would take this uh, opportunity as payback. They were not there for me, so you cannot tell me what to do. You cannot tell me how to live my life. And we have several examples of uh, superstars, especially internationally, who just go wow from their things. That's because their parents were not there. They're not there to mold them. So when it's now too late, they, they try to mold them to what they should be. So don't be that parent that the child will go out there to discover himself. If you, if you can't do it on your own, you, you, you can seek for help. You can collaborate with the child's um, parents, either in school or in church. Collaborate with them that, okay, my child, I seem not to understand how best to help this child um, grow to discover his purpose or whatever. Don't, don't ever force your own desire on your child. I mean, for, um, for some of us, uh, our parents, excluding me, I, I, I was fortunate, but I understand that most Nigerian parents force their own desires on their children and they end up regretting it. They do the same thing. So look at it. Your parents force their own desire on you. Are you happy with, with how you've turned out? Is this what you'd rather be doing? I'm sure many of us, if given the opportunity, we would say, oh, I would not be who I am today. I would, I would rather be something else. Uh, I'll mention uh, the name of this person. Very successful uh, working professional, accomplished in the, in the professional world. She said recently, that she would, be, she would have rather chosen to be a singer with all the success. I was wild. I said, wow, with all the success, the, the global recognition and everything. She said, given the chance, if she had to turn back the ends of time, she would have chosen to be a singer, regardless of the success. Because true satisfaction, true fulfillment comes from doing what you really want to do, what you are born, born to do. So at the end of the day, she just lived her life for her parents. Not like, not like she totally uh, regrets the life that she lives now, but she just said she would rather be doing something else. She was lucky. Some others were not lucky. They just decided to tow the path that their um, parents designed for them. And they ended up not happy. It ended up becoming almost a disaster for them. So that's, that's my charge to um, parents listening to me today. Number one, Study your child, get to know your child before making any judgment, before criticizing, before condemning, before doing anything. Study the child, help the child discover their strengths, help them realize their weaknesses, help them know what to focus on, what to major in and what to drop or what to use as a side hustle or a, or a side um, or a hobby. Yeah, what to make a career and what to make a hobby. For me, uh, I have several hobbies, so it's not my career. My career is accessory design. 
but I have several hobbies. My hobbies are writing, my hobbies are one of it is what I'm doing now. I love to teach. It's my hobby. But I won't uh, say, oh, tomorrow I want to go and lecture in a university or whatever. It may happen eventually, maybe when I retire. But for now, my passion and my major focus is accessory designing. Every other thing is secondary. So help your child discover that and help them help, help them with placements. That's why I'll call it placement. Oh, yeah, and this is what you should major in because this is your uh, area of uh, core competence and this is what you should make your hobbies. Then number two, nurture them, groom them. If, 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 you, if you are now aware of, because I understand that, you know, some of these issues are beyond us because we're not under this apparatus, we are not able to help the child. I mean, you can't give what you don't have. So if you are unable to help your child, you, you can seek help. Collaborate with their teachers or whatever, as I said. At least the child will know that you were there for them and they are, you are, you are, inter you are interested in their growth. You are, you are, you are part of their, their process and they, they will thank you for it. We may think these children don't notice these things. We may think that these uh, children are too small to understand these things. But uh, let me tell you something. A three-year-old now is smarter than you know a 10-year-old a or 15-year-old child some years ago. They, they come smarter now. So from a, from a young age, they're sensitive, they're emotional, they're aware of their emotions, they're sensitive to, to things. So don't think, oh, this three-year-old child doesn't know what happens. Every word that you say matters. Every action that you take matters. They will remember it and they will reference it tomorrow. So it is very, very important. Then you can connect with um, parents of children that are doing, uh, whose children are doing well today, whose parents have um, groomed them well and we're, we're still um significant figures in their children's life i mean we have the likes of um there's a lady I, i'm trying to remember her uh, instagram and i don't know how many of us uh, remember this show in uh back in the in the early 2000s it was a show where that uh discovered tenny tenny the entertainer kkb show so i just discovered she's a customer of mine so I just discovered recently that her son was one of the kids in that KKB show. And then she was celebrating the child. The child is now much older now. He's 26 or 27 now. He's much older now. She was celebrating the child and I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. I saw the child's reply to her, to her the message to the son. And I could tell that she was actively involved in the child's life. Don't mortgage your responsibility to somebody else. Don't mortgage your, your joy, your fulfillment in your, in your children to somebody else. You need to be there for them. For me, growing up, I, I, I didn't want to tell too much of my story, but let me just tell one of it. Back in the 90s, I remember there was a show on uh, AIT then called uh, Scrap Palace. So it was all about um, teaching children crafts, how to be resourceful. So that was basically the, the idea of the show, teaching children resourcefulness. So, you know, children always love to fiddle with things, destroy things and everything. So it decided, and that's a fantastic thing it did, it decided to channel this innate uh, trait in children, you know, to destroy things, to uh, dismantle things, trying to discover uh, why something works the way it does. And it's decided to channel it the right way. So it taught us how to do different things. It taught us how to use um, calendars, that uh, wire on top of calendars, how to use it to craft um, bicycles and stuff like that. It taught us uh, paper mache, how to make uh, face masks with paper mache, a lot of things. It taught us how to make toys and all of that. So at the end of the day, what happened was that rather than we destroying the things our parents bought for us, we destroyed it for a good reason. We repurposed items. So maybe there's an old item in the house, maybe an old radio or something. We, it, it, from the training we got from him, we're able to repurpose these things. So I was doing it, he just came, they introduced the, uh, his idea into the school curriculum. So I was one of the kids who picked interest in it. The man, Uncle A, picked interest in me. So he had a program on AIT where he features uh, bright talent. So I was one of the children that he featured back then, you know, were exceptionally talented uh, children who are very creative. So he just featured us and then on, on air, we crafted things alongside him. So from an early age, I knew I wanted to be an artist. At that time, I was not very sure what kind of artist I wanted to be. 
either a painter, a visual artist, a music artist, or whatever, but I knew I wanted to be an artist. It helped. That was a good foundation for me. My parents supported me. They groomed me. They let me go for those things. Acting, I was there. Uh, there was one other man, too. his name was Uncle E. You know, he came and then he taught us all sorts of things. Calisthenics, I was there. Choreography, I was there. Singing, I was there. But eventually, by myself, I discovered what I wanted to do and my parents gave their blessings. So you can take the cue for my own parents. They let me be. They let me be whatever I want. They didn't compare me with my uh, ethical older brother. My brother was a bookworm. Not like I was not a bookworm, but he was on another level. He was a multiple award winner academically. So he didn't compare me with, with him. They discovered that we're different in, in unique ways. So they celebrated our uniqueness. That's our parents now. And then they let us be. Today, we are happy people. He's doing well. I'm doing well. We're all doing well. So I, I hope uh, with these few points of mind, I've been able to convince and not confuse you that you can actually make the most of your child's hyperactive nature, of your child's uh, creative instincts that they, they display from a young age and how to channel it right. Thank you very much. So we can take questions and uh, contributions now. Okay, thank you so, so much, Benga. In fact, it comes to drop it hot, 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 like, I've just been taking notes, you know, and if there's anything that I've learned today oh, is that, see, you have to, you know, the way we adults, we have the main job beside us. So you can't yeah. treat those gifts like that for your children, for the children. Yeah. You know? it, it goes a long way because it helps you manage multiple passions. Yeah. It's, um, it's, thank you so, so much. So uh, while we wait for questions, um, um, for those on Facebook Live and YouTube Live, if you have questions, please write your questions down. We'll get around to them. Okay, and please hurry up because we have a time slot. But uh, while we wait for questions on Facebook and YouTube, I have a few questions of my own, if you don't mind. Thank you. Okay, so, um, okay, I think you've answered the first one. The first question should have been that what steps do you think parents of most passionate children can take to help their children? Because what you, all those things you're talking about, different passions, that's most passionate, you know? Yeah. So, um, what steps do you think they can take to help those children? Uh, well, I, I already mentioned uh, maybe almost all of it. Yeah. <laughs> you did, you so did actually. Like so, question. like I said, you already answered. Yes, you already answered the question. Okay. So, now, um, I have seen you talk about your parents. I heard you talk about your parents and how they encouraged you. So, can you tell us specifically, you know, how, as in, give us a few examples of how they encouraged you, you know, and how they encouraged you on your jewelry design journey? How they encouraged me it, 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 on my journey, it didn't start when I started being an artist. It started a long time ago. So that's why I took you back to the 90s, you know, with uh, Square Palace. And also, they always, uh, in church, I was always active. In church, I was in evangelism. I was in uh, choir. I was in drama. I was everywhere. So I was this child that hated to be idle. Even in, at home, you know, my, my sister was uh, just in her daughter's recently that, ah, Uncle Benga, that when he was a child, he was an evangelist. So rather than sit at home and be having a CS, having my sister or whatever, I will carry Bible going from house to house to preach. I was active. So you could, as a young child, you could have said, oh, I would turn out to become a teacher. But eventually, I was only preparing myself to become a teacher because today I teach. I teach jewelry design. I teach uh, business. I teach um, passion. I teach different people. I even teach, I still teach in church anyway. I won't call myself a preacher. But, you know, my parents allowed me be. They nurtured me and they helped me. You know, so many entrepreneurs today, successful but they cannot pass down the knowledge that they have they don't know how to interpret it they don't know how to re, uh, uh, make an impact it's not intentional so when you invite them for speaking engagements like that they develop cold feet and they'll most likely turn you down because they don't even know how to face an audience even virtual audience i'm telling you do you understand of course not everybody is blessed with the gift of, of the gap but what i'm saying is that my parents allowed me be. They not. They didn't tell me uh, how many things you want to do. So pick a struggle now. Do you want to be a singer or a preacher or an event? Do you understand? But everything that they allowed me be as a child are now helping me. They, they become a part of 
my progress, a part of my story today. They've become part of my uh, coping mechanism. They become who I am today. So today I cannot only uh, create uh, stunning designs. I can grant interviews. I can speak with, um, before an audience of of thousands. I can share my story. I can teach what I know. I can share lessons. Do you get writing too? Brand storytelling more than ever before is more important because right now people are not interested in uh, how how good you are or how good your products and services are. They want to know you. They want to know your story. They want to know the story behind your products and your services. So uh, being a writer, being a good writer from a, a young age has helped me to communicate my story, my brand story, my personal story, my success story to my audience. I get it and it helps attract them to me. So they become so enamored of me that from being fans, they become customers, from customers, they become ambassadors of, of, of the brand. So it, that gift is making me money. Do you understand? As against those who just sit and lament and I don't know how to do it. Because Instagram right now, if you are just selling, in social media generally, if you are just selling and all that, they are going to, the algorithm is going to restrict your post. So you are just posting and you are wondering, people are not engaging, people are not commenting what is happening, and what are my posts not good enough? It's because they want to engender more social interaction. So they want less sales posts and more uh, social engagement posts. So this um passions that i was my parents helped develop from a young age they're helping me now so it's not difficult for me to engage with my audience to tell stories to uh, come up with ideas to, that, that will help me interact with them and then draw them to the brand and make the brand top of mind so they've helped me in so many ways actually okay thank you so much for answering in fact um i have one more question here but um, uh, it seems you have answered it. But let me ask, okay? So that's, okay. let me just ask it to you. But um, now, you know this thing about like side hustle, I'm really interested in that, you know? Um, and it makes a lot of sense. You have the main one that you're focusing on and you have the, so the other ones, you don't just look at them like they're a waste. They can tie into what you're doing. For someone like you, you're a good storyteller. You're a good, you know, um, you're a content creator and all that. All those things help your brand. Okay, so um, my next question is that how do you manage your jewelry design career with multiple hobbies? Because I know you say you sing, you know, you preach, you teach, you know, so how do you manage, how do you tie in everything? Uh, yes, you're right. I've kind of answered the question, do you understand? Because as, um, as, a, as an entrepreneur, I use, uh, I, I use my knowledge of content creation to attract customers to and to the brand for sales conversions i use them to generate leads so take for example there's instagram reels now your instagram reels have to be fun and catchy your instagram reels have to make people curious draw people to your brand so if i didn't have knowledge of video editing or how to create engaging content i won't be able to do that or if i don't have uh, knowledge of creating uh, appealing art copies i won't be able to attract new audiences to myself or uh, uh, go about uh, successful customer acquisition or customer retention. So all of this helps me, you know, for it's not enough for you to post a good product. Your caption has, has to be captivating. Your caption has to tell us why we need to buy your product, why your product is uh, better than that of another person. So writing comes into play. Yeah. So that side also doesn't necessarily mean, oh, you commercialize it. You can commercialize it for your own purpose. You can you can integrate it with your main, main also. Are you getting my point? And then make more money through it. I am I making sense? You make money, more money through it. I know well and good. If you have people approach you that, oh, I like your videos. I like the way you take pictures. Can you do that for me? Of course you can do that. Last year during the lockdown, I discovered that so many people were learning this and that. And then I, I just thought of it that so many people ask me, oh, your pictures are beautiful. How do you take them? How do you edit them? It was a, a, a critical question. I didn't have the time to teach before then, but lockdown, we're all trapped in the house. We're not going anywhere. We had a lot of time on our hands. So 
I decided to do what to teach uh, product photography and I made quite a lot of money from it. I made hundreds of thousands from it. You know, I decided to teach graphics design. I decided to teach a bit of, that was a one-on-one -on -one, uh, class with a couple of uh, entrepreneurs like myself, video editing. I taught that too and I made money from it. Do you get, it's just because I don't want to get distracted. Otherwise, I, I, I could I, I could have um, gone a step further with that, you know, make, create uh, a, a proper course with uh, with that uh, with with that uh, tutorial, the product photography tutorial and all. I could have created a course and then sold to people, but maybe later, maybe not now. I don't want to be distracted, like I said, because. It also tally with, time, with the time I diversified. I used to be known for just jewelry, but right now we do accessories. So we do bags, we do um, belts, we do headbands, air accessories generally. So I didn't want to be distracted. Now that's a side also too, because I just realized, that, okay, I can't be doing jewelry, jewelry, jewelry. I should diversify into other things. Do you get still? Right now I'm not just a jewelry designer. Some people know me as a millionaire. Some people know me as a bag designer. So I'm now different things. So just what is critical is find a way to tie your, uh, to sync your side hustles with your main also. You shouldn't clash with your, with the schedule of your main also. You shouldn't in, 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 inter, uh, it shouldn't disrupt it. Are you getting my point? It's very important because people ask that question, oh, how do I have successful side also? Just make sure that you it's flexible. Your side also has to be flexible. It can't be a full time engagement. I mean, you can't be uh, um, a full time uh, a, a nine to five person and then uh, 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 be a full time actor. It can't work. I'll give you examples of some famous people that will know that some of you don't know. They actually have uh, formal jobs. There's this Nollywood actress. Her name is Jemima Osundi. She's a doctor. And what we've seen, she's in quite a number of movies. She's a doctor, a practicing doctor. Then there's Ake Faminu. Ake Faminu is a, is a fashion blogger, is a content creator, is an influencer, but he's also a doctor. He has a regular job. I mean, he works in, in the hospital. Same thing as, uh, same with, with uh, Jemima. But you know, they've fashioned it in such ways. Jemima too is even, she's a model, she's a brand ambassador too. I mean, she was she was a lot ambassador, I think last year or two years ago. So they found a way to tie this side also into their schedule. So they are not always in the hospital. They have a, a clinic hours. I think that's what they call them, clinic hours. So one, one, when they are off their clinic hours, they're going to book them for a movie. They make them understand, oh, this is, I know these people personally, so I know how it works with them. You know, these are my clinic hours. I'm not available so, 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 so they, or maybe they're booking them for a shoot, either photo shoot or video shoot. I'm not available so, so, so time. I'm only free or so, so, so. They. Of course, doctors have, have their off days, so they let them know. So that is when they do their side also, and they're successful at it. They make, they're they making their impact as doctors and then they're successful with their side also, which many people think is even their main also. Of course, the side also makes them more money anyway. So that's it. Your side also can also make you more money than your uh, main also. So just sit down, think about it and then see how you can, uh, see how it all pans out. Okay, thank you so much for that. In fact, I didn't know the member of Sunday was a doctor. I mean. That's, that one blows my mind. <laughs> okay, so um, one last question. I just saw, I think, I'm not sure where it's from, maybe Facebook or YouTube. But the question, okay, we are, we are throwing it back to your childhood, right? Now, of course, you went to school. You, you got an education. So the question is, how were you able to, the question is, how were you able to balance education with all those other things that you were doing as a child? Ah, uh, it was a clash. Those, I think my parents helped balance it out. It's it not that at a point I knew what activities I could uh, engage in at a particular time and what activities I couldn't engage in. So I knew when exam is getting close, like I can't be active in uh, in uh, church runs or whatever. I couldn't be active. In. So I balanced. And then I remember there was a year, I think when I was in GSS3, I was getting really distracted. So now my father was a pastor. So I remember CRK, I had C for something in CRK. 
it was a disappointment. Like you, a old child of a pastor. Ah, no, 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 no. You are taking this thing too far. So it sat me down. Another child will beat, another father will beat his child, say negative things to him. He sat me down. He said, Bring her, don't you think that there's something wrong that you, an evangelist, he even teased me, you, an evangelist, a pastor's son, see for his yeah, okay. Perhaps you're getting too distracted. It made me see reasons. So my parents reasoned with us. They treated us as adults. They treated us as rational beings. And that's the problem. Many Nigerian parents, many African parents treat their children like commodities. Like they don't have their mind, the mind of their own, or they don't have their own feelings. They are, they, are, they are insensitive to the feelings of their child. Your child has feelings. Your child has a mind of their own. They are allowed to have opinions. So my parents were always conscious of that. So they're mindful of how they communicated things to us. They were mindful of even how they disciplined us. Do you understand? My father was a kind of man who, I remember when there was a time that he beat me and then I was, I, even me, I get my own forehand for small. So I, I, the beatings I got, I think he only beat me like twice or so in my, in my entire life, you know. But those times I knew that I deserved, except once, you know, and then he apologized for it. That's the kind of parents that I had. So don't be afraid to apologize to your child because the, for my early age, you can teach your child self-respect, integrity. They watch these things. They are aware of these things. So back to my CRK story, it made me see reasons with, with, with what uh, was happening at the time. And then I thought of it, I said, really big, I cannot continue this way. It made me realize that, you know, these activities were affecting my academics, you know, that used to be an uh, ape student in English. So how come that you are getting a B3 in English? You know, it didn't say it in an harsh way. It made me see reasons. And it is very understood. It, it is very critical you do that. So I sat and I thought of it, you know, and my father has a way with words. He was fantastic with words. So I sat and then thought of it that, you know, so by myself, by myself, I left the school choir. By my, they nominated me to be chapel prefect. By myself, I said, I'm not doing it. Do you understand? It's because my parents made me realize that I support you. You want to do things you want to do. I support you, but please, see, you know, I invested so much too. So we, we, we expect, you know, some dividends. And then we don't want you to um, stick out like a sore tongue. So the, the, I don't know. I can't, if there's an English word for it, I would have used it. The way they did it, the way my parents did it, you know. So understand, even when I was being wild and all that, the way they would communicate, and they never a negative word. My mom will usually say this thing. Maybe I'm doing so. Ah, washa no fwen. God have mercy on you. So rather than saying, shofek mamini. Do you understand what are powerful? The words I speak to your children are powerful because they end up becoming these words. They end up becoming the monsters that we create with, with our words. You call your child Oloibuku. How will the child not become an Oloibuku? You, the child becomes an Oloibuku and then you blame it on the child. No, you should be, you should feel foolish. So the words we speak is very important. Very, very important. You know, so I, it was easy balancing it out by myself, you know, they made me see reasons that then, so, okay, I can't do this, I can't do that, you know, and then uh, God so good, the school helped too, so at the time when students were supposed to be serious with their academics, they're not bringing in uh, an external choreographer or something, do you understand, they didn't bring in an external chore choreographer when, uh, uh, I think, when was, I, I can't remember <laughs> how many weeks into exam, but I, I just remember that. So they, they altered those activities at that time so we could focus on our uh, academics. Okay, thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. I think um, what's one thing that I've picked from what you said is that really your parents were the ones that set it such that there was yeah. no clash. So you yeah. didn't have to struggle with anything. So I think that's even really the answer to the question that it's still up to the parents, you know, you are the one that would arrange it. You don't, you don't pile things up when school is in session, you know, you have to plan your school calendar with the child's um, creativity calendar. Uh -huh. So um, I think that's it. So thank you so I much. I mean, Linda. one suggestion, sorry to uh, okay, cut you, one ahead. suggestion I want to make is this. 
Now, it's important you give your child a sense of direction because at an early age, they may not have the good sense. Today. Another thing is, know what activities are important for your children and which are not. If you have a creative child, if you'd ask me, see, the truth is that extracurricular, uh, extracurricular uh, lessons, those, I, what they call it now, that lesson that we do after the school, after school all class, over, uh, after, after school, school class after and everything. School. See, it's just a ploy for many parents to keep their children in school for long. And it's just a way of uh, teachers making extra cash because we play. We play in those lessons. Do you understand? We're never serious. We're busy just Even the teachers are not serious because they are uh, tired. So if you have a creative child, rather than force those extracurricular, uh, extracurricular classes on your children, why not enroll them in art classes? You know, I think children uh, nowadays, they are, uh, they are privileged because right now we have people teaching art. You are doing that. So why not enroll? You can get an art, to, uh, an art teacher for your child. So rather than that one, or rather than if your child is doing fairly okay in uh, in school, there's no reason forcing the child to have straight A's in their in their results. If they're having uh, between A's and C's, I think they are doing well. Even if it's C C C C, but it's just that parents like to force these things on their children. I want you to be an award winner. I want you to have straight A's. They won't all be uh, uh, academic stars. You know, so if they're having C's, it's okay. If you have a creative child, get a, a teacher for them. Or you can even invest, right now, people learn things online. My uh, uh, my nieces, all of them learn these things on YouTube. They won't tell me, oh, they introduced me to five uh, five minutes crafts. I never knew of that. But, so oh. they, on that, yeah, they did. So they learn lifestyle acts. All uh, their father did. Uh, for them was get them it uh, get them tabs so they have their own tab and how much is the tab really because if you combine the cost of uh, uh, paying for this what's it called extracurricular lessons and all of that you buy a tab get a tab for them get substitution you can have luck so I understand that there's always the uh, snare of oh you don't want them to get addicted to pornography or what have you yeah. you can set locks. Do you understand? You can set logs, find out how to do these things so that they cannot visit um, certain sites. They cannot, I'll call them evil sites, so that it's only YouTube that they are doing on, uh, that they are watching on uh, the uh, on their tab. And you can even track their activities, find out how to do that. Do you understand? So let them learn uh, these things. Lifestyle acts are there on the on youtube and then encourage them let them try things out oh so what did you learn today shubumi what do you do or you didn't watch your youtube video oh i learned photography oh let me take a picture of you fantastic encourage them you're building a superstar do you understand so these days it's not even all about saying spending so much money on teachers and all of that we just in tap and data they learn these things so i i really think children of that is are privileged they are privileged and um, they are privileged. Thank you so much for those tips, you know. Parents that are listening, I hope you've heard, okay? You have to find ways to balance it and, you know, everything is on YouTube. Like I said yesterday, research. You have to find out everything you are looking for is on YouTube. Every, there's not there's nothing you want to learn in this life that you cannot find on YouTube. I learned, so, I learned uh, product photography and all on YouTube, video editing YouTube. YouTube. So... so um, Okay, so um, for, for those of you who think that your children are excelling in um, jewelry design, I think you can contact Benga, right? Benga, you do, do, do you teach children how to make jewelry? Mm -hmm. Right now, we don't even have physical classes, but we're working on uh, uh, an online course for, you know, some, something that will benefit both uh, children and adults, you know. I mean, teenagers, uh, preteens, majorly. Okay, okay, that would be great. So, I mean, I would encourage people to join the jewelry making class. I mean, it's, it's a great um, initiative. Okay, so thank you so, so, so much for joining us, for speaking to us. You know, it has been very insightful. I've taken notes. In fact, my nice paper is here. almost full. <laughs> thank you so, so much. So, um, I'm going to let you go now. You, you, well, or you can leave now, you know, because um, we're done with our session. Thank so, you. thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.
All right. I hope you enjoyed that. I mean, I was busy taking notes like, okay, okay, you know, okay, this, okay, that, like, ah, I didn't even know that you, you could look at it as a side hustle. I mean, <laughs> we adults are all about side hustle. So look at it as like, okay, my child likes to act. She also likes to sing, you know, there will be the main one. The other ones can still be useful, you know, and this ties into what um, our last speaker said yesterday for like a the division clarity expert, you know, she talked about most, most passionate, you know, and how to manage them. So um, it ties into that, you know, that see, you know how to manage these children. You know how to manage their multiple passions. Even though it may look like uh, they don't have direction, trust me, they do. And if, if you think they don't, you can guide them. You know, you can guide them. One important thing about Swinger's success is that his parents encouraged him. His parents, you know, they, they, they were his guide. They were his guardians, you know. So, see, imagine him saying that there was no clash between his um, creative activities and his education. That is some major parenting skill there, like major. Like the parents must have really scheduled it, like, see, okay, you can do this, you can't do this. You understand? That's like, they were his managers from time. They understand? So you as a parent, you have to be, you have to, it still boils down to being intentional. You know, you, you know that, okay, your child has creative activities, your child has school. You want to merge both. You manage it. You manage it. Okay. You manage it. Find ensure that nothing clashes. Okay. Um, okay. Um, we talked about a lot of things. You know, I would be breaking it down later. Okay. We'll be uh, we'll be chewing on them later. Okay. So I think um, we want to bring in the next speaker. Okay. One more thing before I, I don't want to forget this is very important. Right. Wenga talked about after school activities, right? Now I understand that the, the economy, you know, the way the country is, the way the world is, a lot of people have to work and they need to find ways to keep their children, right? I completely understand that, right? So what, what he's trying to say is that while you want to keep your children somewhere, ensure that where you're keeping your children, 